Greetings, I am Peter Olson of the Northern Illinois University Art Museum in DeKalb, Illinois, and this is a deep dive into the printmaking technique of engraving, specifically in the work of David F. Dreisbach, my mentor as I was earning a Master of Fine Arts degree at NIU back in the 20th century. First, a brief note. Identifications of the prints in this video will be followed by numbers. These are the date, dimensions, and catalog record accession numbers for the collection of the NIU Art Museum. If there isn't a number, this print is from my personal collection. The medium for all the prints is engraving, unless otherwise noted, and all were donated by Mr. Dreisbach himself or members of his family, unless otherwise noted. Another brief note. Engravings are intaglio prints. Intaglio is an umbrella term for prints made from etched or incised lines and textures in a usually metal printing plate. The plate is daubed with ink, then the surface is wiped clean, leaving ink down in those recessed areas. The ink is transferred to paper, resulting in a print when it's rolled through a press. Engraving, etching, aquatint, soft ground, and dry point are all intaglio processes. A good place to start our engraving odyssey would be with one of Mr. Dreisbach's many self-portraits. This one is from 1967, the year I was born. There is no color, no textured shapes, none of the inventive intaglio techniques that Dreisbach was a master of. Throughout his artistic career, he always made monochromatic copper plate engravings interspersed with his prints and other media. It was one of his ways of staying in touch with his artistic roots. Engraving is one of the oldest European printmaking techniques and grew out of the process of carving decorative designs into metal battle armor. The act of incising a line into a sheet of metal by hand is an intense process. It is not at all like making a quick sketch where the pencil skips across the paper and lines can be easily erased. To erase an engraved line, the artist must use a tool called a scraper to scrape away at the surface of the plate until the engraved line disappears. Then the little valley must be burnished until smooth with, you guessed it, a tool called a burnisher so that ink will no longer stick to that area. To excel at engraving, one must be a confident draftsperson. Each line has to be considered separately and created slowly by pushing a sharp metal tool called a burin into the surface of the copper plate. The resulting lines, when printed, have a distinctive look, tapered at one end where the burin first enters the metal, then widening and deepening with increased pressure. Another unique aspect about engraving. When you push a burin into a plate, the metal displaced in this process gathers up in a curvilineal spiral as you go. These tiny metal curly cues need to be snapped off with your scraper tool. You can see these stumps at the end of each line on this plate. It was under the tutelage of Mauricio Lazansky at the University of Iowa that Dreisbach developed a facility with this technique. Lazansky encouraged a visceral and physical approach to intaglio printmaking, including the use of deeply engraved lines. The swirling lines in the hair on this portrait are deeply engraved. A detail in raking light shows the unique qualities of the original print, where the lines are so thick they stand up in relief. Another Dreisbach print worth looking at is burgundy gold bar. This print, along with both printing plates, were exhibited at the museum in 2009 in a retrospective organized by a museum studies class. The plate used for engraving is copper, traditionally the best metal to use for engraving. If it was good enough for the old masters, it's good enough for me, Dreisbach used to say. Another commonly used metal for intaglio printmaking is zinc, which is softer, less evenly grained, and cheaper. 
The second plate in burgundy gold bar is not made of copper or zinc. It is high impact styrene, a plastic material Dreisbach experimented with in the 1970s. This is the white plate on the wall. Isolated areas on the styrene plate were inked a la poupée with a small dauber in orange, blue, or red. The entire copper engraving plate is printed in black. This print allows for a comparison of the qualities of engraved versus dry point lines. Note the sharp tapered black engraved lines next to orange lines that are more casual and meandering. Since the polystyrene plate could not be etched in acid like a metal plate, we know that these lines were scratched lightly into the surface of the soft plastic with a tool called a dry point needle. On a metal plate, dry point scratches leave a rough edge. On styrene, this rough burr breaks off instantly as the artist draws, leaving smooth lines. Dreisbach switched off between a burin and a dry point needle as he worked across the plate. Can you tell which are the pointy and straight engraved lines? Another type of mark on this plate was made by rapidly rocking a tool called a scorper back and forth while pressing into the table. The business end of a scorper is the flat side of a little square, not a sharp point like a burin. The resulting ragged marks approximate the texture of a thickly woven rug. Burgundy gold bar is a complex image. Dreisbach, his wife, and their dog are at home in the house he designed and built in Kingston, Illinois, north of DeKalb. Hanging on the wall in the background is an iconic self-portrait engraving by Mauricio Lozanski. Dreisbach owned this print for many years. I remember seeing it in his living room when I visited. After Mr. Dreisbach passed on, it was generously donated to the NIU Art Museum by John and Janice Dreisbach. The oddly patterned banner running below the windows contains the words Money Prize obscurely and subliminally worked into the design. The print did, in fact, win a prize when it was first included in a competitive exhibition. There is also subliminal seduction in a glass of iced tea near the bottom center of the print and elsewhere if you look closely. It is a challenge in engraving to make a solid black shape as you have to amass a multitude of single lines to do it. It had only been a few short years since Dreisbach had made similar shapes on an exercise plate at renowned printmaker Stanley William Hayter's Atelier 17 workshop in Paris. Two other large engravings that Dreisbach completed in the 1970s are Albert's Dog and The Everyday Occurrence. These are both 100% engravings and took months to complete. Remember, each individual line had to be incised in a metal plate. Dreisbach's assignment to himself was not to use preliminary drawings, but to let each plate evolve organically, figure by figure, element by element. In other words, when he started, he had no idea what the finished print would look like. He showed this print to me when I first arrived at NIU. I remember him saying something like, I was adding figures in this area, and they were starting to look like they're in a parade. So I thought, let's have some musical accompaniment. The title of Albert's Dog refers to Albrecht Dürer, a great early master of engraving and one of Dreisbach's heroes. The dog napping in the corner, as well as the solid octahedron, are quotations from Dürer's 1514 print, Melancholia I which abounds with symbolic imagery. Not only was Dürer a huge influence on Dreisbach in terms of craft, but also in his use of imagery. The multiple elements of Dürer's engravings added up to a moral, theological, and intellectual depth that was seldom equaled. Religious imagery pervades much of Dreisbach's work, 
but I think his use of it was more aligned with the cultural references and the study of art history than deep personal theology of any particular flavor. Biblical vignettes are often placed within the context of modern imagery, such as figures and objects from the 20th century. Mr. Dreisbach was always evasive about assigning single specific meanings to these details, as if one of his prints was a rebus to be solved. He preferred to leave it up to the viewer to construct their own meanings. I don't think this was a cop-out. I think he trusted in the imaginative potential of every person. Another fun fact about Albert's dog. The proportions of the plate itself conform to a golden rectangle. It's a math geek thing that you can Google if you want. There is another golden rectangle tangent with the bottom of the print, framing a landscape featuring yet another dog beside a music stand, a card player with his eyeglasses pushed up, two incomplete figures, and a building in purposefully awkward perspective. There's another reason why Dreisbach was interested in engraving, because that's how paper money is made. Little engraved prints that we all carry with us at any given time. He himself used the visual vocabulary of American money in many of his prints, augmenting or rearranging it collage style to make images such as Off to the Office, a nostalgic, whimsical concoction. Holes were drilled in the copper plate, and real coins were inserted after he had wiped them with red or blue ink. The brown ink, over the one and a half cent stamp, was applied with a roller through a stencil. Another example, printed in green ink, is five dollars and three cents. As a lifelong engraver, he was pretty good at mimicking this style so good that some of his prints were seized from a gallery window by government officials and he was threatened with counterfeiting charges. Because he always rearranged isolated elements of money and changed the scale, he was never charged. But they kept an eye on him under suspicion of having the necessary skills to someday become a real counterfeiter. Here are a few more Dreisbach engravings. It is interesting to compare a gritty street scene like Drifters to something mythological, like Saturn devoured his young. Is one fantasy and the other reality? To me, they are not opposites. He renders mythology with granular detail and sharp focus, and sees mythological tropes played out in the observable human comedy around him. Early state proofs might be given working titles, which sometimes changed as the image developed. His facility with the medium became second nature. I imagine that the world seen through his eyes looked like everything was covered in a structural network of lines. He took, as they say, to this process as a duck takes to water. To add a little color to his engravings, Mr. Dreisbach would sometimes deposit a thin, translucent layer of ink over the surface of the plate before printing. This was done with a rubber roller, resembling a rolling pin. To continue the baking metaphor, this process had to be carefully controlled. Here is an engraving, hastily printed in green ink with an orange surface roll. The orange ink is too thick and obscures the finely engraved lines. Stepping backward in the process, here is an earlier proof of the same print, printed in black with pencil lines suggesting intended developments to the plate. It is fun to compare the two and see that the trolley was going to display an advertisement for an adult beverage, but that changed to a more family-friendly circus poster and a bare-chested female passenger got covered up. By the way, that's Dreisbach himself over on the right side of the print working on an engraving. I also have the original sketch in ballpoint pen on a scrap of paper. Artists rarely preserve such ephemera. 
Trolleyscape was never editioned. It became a study for a larger print, Night in the City. In this version, a film noir effect is achieved through the high contrast chiaroscuro of white shapes across the composition. Near the beginning of this video, I showed the example of Burgundy Gold Bar, a print that was very clear about the way it juxtaposed engraving with other types of line quality. In Matsuda's dream, which appears to be the nightmare of a war veteran, partially delineated figures lie hidden in the shadows. The large dark shape of Japanese General Iwayu Matsuda may appear flat, but it contains barely perceptible specters in a web of engraved lines, obscured by etching and aquatint over the same area. Comparing the print to the copper plate, the lines are much more visible. Engraved lines and etched lines and textures combine to produce a richness, a visual and emotional tone. Late in his life, Mr. Dreisbach was increasingly less able to get himself across town to a print shop with acid baths and printing presses. He continued, however, to keep making his prints. By developing engravings that didn't need acid baths, he could work on them at home. I honestly don't think he could stop engraving. There was no off switch. Friends would collect the plates and print them for him. He often hand colored the results with watercolors. These prints were made when Mr. Dreisbach was 94 years old. It is my intention to make more videos on the work of my mentor, so stay tuned. To access previous videos on the art that has impacted my life, search YouTube for NIU Art Museum, Art From Home. Thank you.